All right, so I'm working out the fall 2018 um, exam three to review for the fall 2019 exam three in math 2144 at OSU, Oklahoma State University. Okay, so on the first question, it asks, um, all right, so Vaughn is going for a run for school. She starts her run from home. The function expresses the relationship between Vaughn's velocity as she runs and the number of minutes that elapsed since she started running. Um, so first of all, what quantity does the area on the rectangle um, represent? What does it approximate? So this is gonna be some sort of time times some sort of rate. And so I know a, a rate times a time is some sort of distance. So this is going to be um, her a distance, so maybe that one, it's not an average velocity, it's not a velocity, it's not an acceleration, or is it a change in distance um, from the interval of time three to four? So I don't actually know where she is um, three minutes after she started running. So, but I will, it will tell me, approximate the change in distance from three minutes to four minutes. Okay, um, then this says, what quantity does this sum approximate? And so, um, so that is starting at one and going to um, seven over two, which is 3.5. So, and then I have um, how many, how many um, kind of intervals do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm breaking this three unit interval up into six equal pieces. And those six equal pieces I'll have um, width one half. Okay, so I have six pieces of width one half. And so this is going to approximate the change in distance from home on the interval from one to four. So the correct answer for that is B. Okay, number three is not, and four are both not covered. Um, actually, yeah, so this is uh, optimization. So three is not on there. Um, four should be on there because it deals with the fundamental theorem part two. So, um, well, actually, it's kind of optimization. So these are both not on um, that exam. So let's go with the next one. Um, problem, skipping also problems two and three. because they are not covered on the fall 2019 exam three. So I just skipped those two problems. Um, the next one tells me the table below gives the flow rate in barrels per hour of a leak of an oil well. So assume that the flow rate was decreasing during the duration of the leak. So I can see that flow rate is decreasing. Um, then I want to use the left endpoint approximation with four equal subintervals to approximate the total volume spilled in the entire four hours. So if I want to do four equal subintervals, I want to divide this into four equal pieces. Um, and I want to use the left hand endpoint approximation. So I'll take the left hand side of each of these um, approximations to um, of each of those intervals to use for my approximation. Okay, so, um, all right, so we will just start with um, the first interval. So the interval was lasted for six hours and the rate was, we're gonna use 81 um, barrels per hour. In the next six hour interval, um, the duration was six hours and we're gonna use the flow rate of 49 um, barrels per hour. 
And then in the next six hour interval, we're gonna use the flow rate of 25 barrels per hour. And then for the last six hour um, interval, we're gonna use the flow rate of nine barrels per hour. So if I compute that in my calculator, I get 900, 984 barrels. Okay, and then it says, is your approximation an overestimate or an underestimate? So if I look at each of these intervals, like at the interval from zero to six, I can see that 81 is the highest flow rate that occurs on that interval. So since I'm using that highest flow rate, um, I'm going to be getting an, an overestimate because we are using the highest flow rate for each interval. And so again, from six to not, six to 12 hours, um, I'm using 49 barrels per, per hour for the flow rate, but that's the biggest flow rate that occurs in that interval. And that's the same for all the intervals. Then it says, write an integral that represents the exact amount of oil spilled during the 24 hour oil leak. So that would just be the integral of the rate from uh, zero to 24 hours. For this one, I'm just going to be um, integrating. So um, the, an, an antiderivative of cosine x is sine x, and an antiderivative of x squared is one third x cubed. And then since this is not a um, definite integral, I'll need to make sure I have my plus c. Okay, for the next one, an antiderivative of four over x is four times the natural log of x. And I want to evaluate that from 1 to 2. Um, again, that's from the fundamental theorem of calculus. So that gives me 4 natural log of 2 minus 4 natural log of 1. You might notice that the natural log of 1 is 0. So the answer is really 4 natural log of 2. Um, for this one, I want to do an antiderivative of um, square root of t. I'm just going to rewrite it at first as t to the 1 half minus 1 dt. Um, and so then I can use the kind of the power rule for antiderivatives. And so I'll have t to the 3 halves um, times 2 thirds um, minus the antiderivative of 1 is t. And since it is um, not a, an, uh, sorry, a definite integral, I'll have to make sure I have the plus c. Okay, so for this one, I want to um, evaluate a of negative three. So this um, is an accumulation function that um, starts at negative five um, and accumulates area there. Um, so a of negative three is going to be the integral from negative five to negative three of f of t dt. And so um, really, I'm looking at this area here which is just a triangle, so I can compute that area um, geometrically. So it's one half times the base, which is two, times the height, which is three. So this is just three units. And then it says, for what values of x on the interval negative five to five does a of x equal zero? Okay, so, um, so if I go from negative five to five, so a of x would be the when the area is zero. So here, if I start at negative five and I go this direction, um, the area is going to be zero when I have the same amount above and below the um, x-axis. So that's going to happen when x equals negative one. And then I'll be collecting a bunch of negative area, and I don't think it's ever gonna um, give me the same amount of positive and negative area again. So x equal negative one is the only solution there. Then it says find a value of x where a of x has a local maximum and justify your response. So when we think about local maximum uh, and optimization, we can think about taking the derivative a prime of x 
which that's the derivative with respect to x of the integral from negative 5 to x of f of t dt. And by the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, that is just f of x. And so if I were to kind of draw this out on my um, a prime number line, um, I'm looking for where the derivative of the uh, accumulation function is equal to zero. So that would just be when f is zero. So that's here and here. So negative three and four. And f of x is negative in between these two and positive here. So that means here a is increasing, here a is decreasing, and here a is increasing again. So a has a local maximum um, here at x equals negative 3. Um, the next one says define another function as the integral from 2 to x of f of t dt. So this one is starting at 2 and going this direction. And it says to evaluate f of 0. So f of 0 is going to be the integral from 2 to 0 of f of t dt which is the negative of the, of the interval, integral from 0 to 2 of f of t dt. Um, and so that integral from 0 to 2 is just going to be this rectangle, which has area um, 2 times 3, so, or 2 times negative 3. So this is negative of um, 2 times negative 3, which gives us positive 6. All right, last one. So this says the graph of the function g is given below. Um, each of these expressions represents a numerical value. Okay, so for the first one, I can see g of 4 minus g of 2 over 2. So that's the um, slope of the secant line from 2 to 4. And um, so it's the slope of this line. So I can actually compute these values. I know g of 4 is 3 minus g of 2 is 1 over 2, so this is actually equal to 1. Then the next thing says g prime of 2, so that would be the slope of this line. So since the function g is concave up, g prime of 2 is going to be greater than, or sorry, it's going to be less than 1. Um, then I have the inter integral um, from uh, 2 to 4 of g of x dx, so that's going to be this area underneath this curve. And so that's going to be approximately, oh, you know, something greater than 3-ish, something like that. So if I look at this area underneath here, um, somewhere around 3 square units, a little bit more maybe. Um, and then this says the limit as x goes to negative infinity of g of x which um, as x goes to negative infinity, the value of g of x is getting closer and closer to zero. And so I want to um, rank these from smallest to largest. So um, four is the smallest and the largest is going to be three.